Next, uh, Gail Chumley. Gail has had to put up with a number of my kids over the years, and, and uh, I know that they have loved your class. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon, Mr. Chairman and honored members of the committee. My name is Gail Chumbley, and I am a classroom veteran of 33 years. I've had the pleasure to teach honors, sophomore, and AP junior American History at Eagle High School for the last 17. In addition, I've advised our EHS History Club, where we as a group have completed such projects as Treats for Troops, where our club has collected and mailed gifts to American personnel over the years in both Iraq and Afghanistan. Additionally, we just completed hosting Holocaust survivor Marion blumenthal Lazen, who addressed a number of audiences in the Valley, as well as two talks at Eagle High. But the high point for the group was as fundraisers for the World War II Memorial from 1999 to 2001, where unexpectedly we gathered and donated more money than any other high school in the nation at $26,000. I was moved to speak here today on a point that I believe has been lost in all the clamor and noise of education reform, a politicized fallacious belief that we as teachers and you as legislators face off in opposition over the future of education. Nothing could be further from the truth. In educating students, we share more in common than not. We both want the best for our kids. This false perception has seriously eroded trust and progress in advancing Idaho public instruction. Our roles undeniably fuse us together in a common cause. We can't do our job jobs to our highest aspirations without you providing the resources for that pursuit of excellence. As our legislators, you hold the critical job of setting policies and underwriting for student funding. As teachers, we hold the critical role of doing the most with what we have. Frontline classroom instructors are charged with the most important position of teaching essential information and skills to Idaho students. Together, we both work to ensure that our state's future is left in the competent hands of our future teachers and legislators. We, two parties, share that trust in common, and we need you to support us in this most difficult and vital calling. I would ask this committee to consider my viewpoint of shared ground, rejecting contrived antagonisms, and remembering the important purpose that draws us both together. We are on the same side of this issue, so please help us to be our best. We, too, desire capable thinking young people who thoroughly educated in the most effective methods as an affirmation of our devotion to future generations of Idahoans. In bargaining and in tenure, I found a safety and a freedom to share all I know with my students. I have felt that the only limits to my kids' growth and achievement I falsely placed on myself. Today, with the, thank you, the protection of these negotiated provisions, my career has been one of success and inspiration. Sadly, with the deep financial cuts since 2008, my numbers of students have increased dramatically, and my time to facilitate the progress with each individual is nearly extinguished. Let me go on. As that has prohibited my ability to maintain my standards of excellence, I am retiring at the end of the school year. I can't do what I know is needed, and I cannot lower my standards in my classes. I can't do what I know is needed. Oh, excuse me. I don't know how. Thank you for your time. Thank you so much. It's good to see you. Uh, next, we have Karen. And Karen, while uh, you're coming to the podium, let me call the next. Uh, so we have, it uh, looks like, Amber Scott Wilson. And then we go to Scott Rogers, Tammy Stevenson, and John Orlovich. So, Karen. Thank you, Chairman, and members of the Joint House and Senate Committees. My name is Karen Pyron, and I'm Superintendent of Mackey School District Number 182. And we are proudly one of those small rural schools. We have 197 students, grades K through 12, and we are a five-star school. Thank you for this opportunity, and I'd like to first highlight a couple of successes. First of all, regarding pay for performance. It has been successful for us 
although some revision to make the plan more universally, universally palatable is needed with local policy and fiscal oversight. Secondly is technology. It is a big piece in helping Mackey provide opportunities for students and allowing teachers to expand otherwise limited resources. It is a vehicle to fill gaps so that we can get the biggest bang for our buck, especially as we begin to implement the Common Core Standards and the SBAC. Now moving on to a couple of challenges, first of all regarding policy. Policy provides the needed flexibility to manage a district, especially in financially challenging times. We need and support House Bill 69, Reduction in Force, and Use It or Lose It. Many districts, like Mackey, cannot meet the cumbersome fiscal emergency provisions of Idaho Code 33522. Mackey has limited fiscal options and few human resources. Use It and Lose It gives fiscal and policy flexibility to address greatest need in a community where only the community can decide. Mackey's board, administration, teachers, and patrons. It is not abdicating control. It is passing the control to the local level where it belongs. Number four is equity and funding. And this is partially achieved by providing the local flexibility just described. But we need form of equity in the tax base. Mackey's tax base is 3%. A 3% tax base severely hampers our local taxing, including supplemental levy, which will be further compromised with the pending business tax legislation. In addition, the loss of federal in lieu of revenue, like the Craig Wyden funds, is a severe blow to Mackey. Decreases in state revenue, 17% over the past four years, have contributed to a gap of $449,000 going into the next school year. We have a two-year plan that includes $150,000 in expense reductions and $150,000 supplemental levy. Mackey schools have two years. Our kids need their schools. Small town economy and culture depend on them. We plan to keep our schools open for years to come, but the current structure is no longer viable. Small rural schools are simply crumbling. It is time for reform and a new structural solution, and we are excited and want to be a part of making that happen. Thank you. Thank you very much, Karen. Next, uh, Amber. Let's see, I'm okay. Are you Amber? I am Amber. All right. I am a parent of three children who currently go to Da Vinci Charter School in Garden City. Um, back in 1994, when I was in my formative years, my peers and I actually worked on coming up with some of the proposals that were made before the committees with regards to charter school propositions. At that point in time, when charter schools were just something that was on the horizon, we thought, hey, that it's a logical choice. We could potentially go to a school that met our learning style and interests and educational needs. Of course, that's something that we as students would want to get behind. When I became a parent, I had to make the decision of what I wanted to do for my children's educa education. When I was in school, I went to Madison uh, Elementary, which had one of the lowest enrollments in all of Ada County. Eventually, that was turned over into an early learning center, but what I got from Madison was that personalized approach that having a small level of enrollment offers each student. My husband went to a very large school, and he wasn't very successful at that center because of the fact that the teachers are stretched to the max. When I became a mom, I sent my daughter to a bricks and mortar school and I was told in kindergarten that she was falling behind. We looked into other resources and thought about tutoring, but that was too costly. So we went to Da Vinci Charter School that was started out of a church. As soon as she got through first grade, she was excelling in every level. Uh, since then, she's flown through school, and the biggest concern she's ever had is, are we ever going to have the funding to have a permanent building. She's been in strip malls and now they're in portables. My other two children are going to school there as well and they have flourished. 
I think that when it comes to educational choice, we as adults have choices to make as to whom we want to choose as our general practitioners, or if we prefer just to go to a regular doc in the box. Our children shouldn't be limited to having a choice just to go to one sort of school. We owe it to them to help them learn to make choices right from an early age. So please consider equity and funding for all different types of schools so our children aren't subjected to just one learning style. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much. Uh, next, Scott Rogers. Chairman DeMordant and Chairman Getty and members of the committee, my name is Scott Rogers. I have spent the last eight years in the role of superintendent for the Minidoka County Joint School District. Our district is located in Rupert, Idaho and the surrounding rural communities. We have a current enrollment of roughly 4,000 students with approximately 580 employees. This afternoon I, I would like you to consider comments on two topics, adequate funding and school reform. First, adequate funding. Simply stated, we desperately need an increase in operational funding from the state of Idaho. What we are facing is a real life financial crisis for local school districts. We have cut in every area from athletics to classified staff. We have cut certified salaries via furlough days, absorbed increased insurance and utility costs, cut school budgets to the very bottom, raised fees to participate in extracurricular activities, and et cetera, et cetera. We've been very frugal and have made necessary reductions to live within our budget. The point of these statements is to uh, ask you to help us continue this frugality by allowing us the local control of the number of staff we hire and still be allowed to receive full state funding. You know this as use it or lose it. Uh, currently we have hired 19 fewer teachers than we generate. And this, equivalates, this is the equivalent of 300 and roughly $350,000 if we're required to revert back to the to the 5% mark. The 1.67% or the fifth factor uh, returns $170,000 and so the di difference is roughly another $170,000. In 2014 this problem would be continued. We need the use it or lose it permanently removed. Since 2008 we have gone from 196 units to 193 units yet our revenues have decreased by 3.6 million Roughly three million of that is attributed to the distribution factor alone. With 30 fewer teachers in the classroom, essentially we are teaching the same number of kids with significantly less funding and less staffing. For illustrative purposes, I took our current fiscal year 2013 budgeted expenditures and added only 30,000 for an increase in workers' comp insurance premiums. I rolled it into the budget figures proposed by Superintendent Luna. Mind you, I included no salary increases, no health insurance premium increases, no increase in operational funding to the schools, essentially a flat budget carried over. The result was a $1.3 million projected deficit. And that is using 100% of our fund balance or contingency reserves. Now, I am no farmer, but this much I do know, if you starve a pig, it will die. For this, and for us, this budgetary situation is neither a manufactured crisis nor a shell game. We desperately need your help. Funding schools at an adequate level does not mean that you're funding the status quo. Schools are eager to implement change, maintain higher learning standards, and reward good teachers. But when finances become scarce, energy is placed on survival and not change. Common Core state standards and the smarter balanced assessments are the drivers of the work in our schools. It's a huge undertaking. Thank you very much. Thank you, Scott. I appreciate that. Next, Tammy Stevenson. Mr. Chairman and committee members, my name is Tammy Stevenson. I'm on the school board trustee for Minidoka County Schools. I've been on the board for five and a half years, and I've had children in the district for 23 years. I come with two main concerns. The first one is school finance. As a bookkeeper, I'm being responsible for doing budgets for our firm for more than 25 years. I understand a little bit about budgets and how they work. If you save money in one area, you should be able to use it somewhere else. School finances and budgets are like nothing else that I've ever dealt with, and they're based on complicated formulas that quite frankly sometimes boggle my mind. A few years ago on the board, due to a budgeting issues and the financial issues we were having, we declared a financial emergency according to state regulations. Not two business items later, we were approving the purchase of two new buses because this, the buses money came from a different pot. This would not be a practice in the regular business world. 
Additionally, if a company could save some money, they would be rewarded for their efforts. School districts are not. If our district comes up with a plan to hire fewer teachers than the state allocates, we receive fewer dollars. This is not true with administrators, but if we hire fewer teachers than allowed, we're punished for being fiscally responsible. We need the flexibility at a local level to be able to balance our budgets. Currently, 85% of our budgets from the general funds are used for salaries and benefits. Without the use it or lose it, we are severely handicapped in what we can do. Our district for the percentage next year of this, uh, before the repeals had gone in would have been $1 million that we would have been able to use otherwise. My second point is that of technology. Education has always been a priority for me when my oldest child was only three, we sacrificed and purchased our first World Book Encyclopedias. We wanted our children to have access to the best possible education. As our children grew, grew, we continued to provide for them books and games and other technology. My two sons took their laptops to high school with them. We have been blessed to provide these additional educational tools for our children. And in my rosy glass world, I thought most parents did. When I was elected to the school board, my rosy eyes were open to a lot of things. One of our elementary schools has 80% free and reduced lunch students. District-wide, the percentage is 67%. I soon realized that a majority of the parents in our district had to work just to provide for food and clothing. There were no resources left for them in order to supplement their children's educational opportunities. They were at the mercy of what the district and the state would provide for their children. And I have to admit, we are doing a poor job of keeping pace with 21st century educational opportunities for the students of the state of Idaho, especially in providing technology. One school in our district has a fabulous opportunity of being an iSchool pilot using iPads to enhance learning. This is not just iPads, but a revolutionary way of teaching our students. The excitement and enthusiasm for learning within that school is amazing. The test scores are going up. I've watched fifth graders pr prepare presentations on their iPads using videos and text and sound and photos at fifth grade. Very impressive. And these are skills that our students need to be prepared for the jobs of the future. We can figure out a way, we need to figure out a way, that we can have this level of education for all students in the state of Idaho. Children are our future. Working together we can accomplish this and working together we must. Thanks for you. Sometimes public service seems like a thankless job, I know. But I want you to know that I appreciate your efforts, especially sitting on this very important and demanding committee. Thank you. Thank you, Tammy. Next, John Orlovich. And while John's coming up, I'll call up the next group. Uh, we have Ryan Kirby, Ron Param Paranude. Thank you. The next one I know, Gloria, I'm going to massacre, but Dr. Gloria, and you know who you are. <laughs> and, and then John McCrosty. Uh, Crosty. That would be the next.